Hi everybody, uh, Martin Cowan, contributing now to the Teen News, back again. Um, I'm sure as a Teen News reader you've all heard of Airbnb and I'd like to think that most of you have heard of Airbnb experiences. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of noise around it when it launched. We looked at it quite deeply and still continue to. It's a really interesting move we think from Airbnb as it looks to move beyond just being you know, somebody's floor to crash on. It's moved way beyond that and the experience is uh, uh, a really good, a really you know, positive indicator of how the business is maturing. We've actually got a real life Airbnb experiences host with us today, Aisha Shabu, I think, who's a London-based experiences host or hostess. <laughs> um, so Aisha, just to give us a, introduce what it is that you do as an Airbnb experiences host and then maybe we can talk a bit more about the how that work, works in practice and the relationship with uh, Airbnb itself. So. Uh, sure, sure. So, yes, my name is Aisha. Um, I recently started as an Airbnb experience host about five months ago. Um, and the concept is to be able to list one of your experiences and the traveller or local can book that through the website. Uh, my experience in particular is called When Night Falls in London and it enables travelers and locals to come out with me on a nightlife experience. So we would go to different events, um, cabarets, open mic nights, dance events, and we go to after parties. So the concept is to try and give the traveler an experience they're not gonna be able to find in the mainstream or commercial routes. So I, because I wanted it to be more of an immersive experience and quite authentic, so giving it a local feel. Yeah, I mean, we we talked previously, haven't we, about the you know the whole sort of Airbnb's marketing campaign is you know you know live like travel like a local, live like a local, and you certainly by providing an experience that they wouldn't get through the you know the usual channels, it's mm. sort of fulfilling Airbnb's local messaging. Um, how, so, how did you become an Airbnb experiences host? I mean, what was the process? Um, similar to the listings, you just have to apply. Um, they have kind of a vetting process. Um, there are interviews, there are like trainings and hints and advice forums. And from then on, if your experience is chosen, it will go up, really. So Airbnb sort out all the promotional side, the photos, the videos. You sort out your own description. Because again, they didn't want it to sound corporate. The concept is to have that local person. So all the words are my own. It's my own experience, so they wanted it to kind of give me that ownership as well, without having to dictate what I should do okay. with it. Yeah. I mean, one of the, the, the perceptions around local is that it's it's almost quite a, a millennial thing. But um, I mean, are you finding different age groups are interested in your your tours? Yeah, certainly. I mean, um, I've had somebody who was in their seventies. Um, starting from 18 to 70, so the, the age range is quite varied. Just when I thought there was a trend or pattern, it changes. So there will be some points I'll have a few younger people and then other times it's all the way like across the spectrum. So um, I, I definitely feel like people need to realise that it's not just for millennials. you know, it is for everybody. Okay, and do you only distribute your tour through Airbnb or can you get it another way? I'm just wondering, are there, is everybody on your tour staying in an Airbnb? Um, they're just an Airbnb customer. So okay. anybody can go and book um, the experience through Airbnb. They don't have to be staying in an Airbnb. Okay, but I mean, are your customers generally staying at Airbnb? Or are oh, they? yes. That's okay. why I think they get most of the clients because after you book an Airbnb home, you get a listing of all the experiences that will be available during your stay. Okay, so, so it makes it easier. Airbnb is actively cross-selling and Exactly, the and also they get them initially as soon as they book. So they will still be back home, booking to come into London, and already they'll be given all this listing of experiences so they can book as soon as they've got a home. Okay, so, and also on, a, on a, a personal note, I mean, how can you, how can you make your, your business bigger is it just a question of doing doing more tours or you know larger larger groups I mean what do you what do you think you you know two or three years down the line do you want to grow as a business and a person I mean how, how do you think you're going to develop yeah I mean I think the best thing is also to open it not just on Airbnb but on like to provide experience for other people 
outside of Airbnb. I mean, I do get a lot of locals, but at the same time, adding perhaps more different tools would be a good idea and having larger groups. Because I currently, I keep the groups quite small because I'm the only one doing it. So I'm out like three to four times a week. So that I could, if I can have more people with me, therefore I can increase the group size. Yeah, you could do a sort of, when, when dawn breaks in London, exactly. if you wanted to do a sort of, a sort of we were talking to uh, Boken and they were talking about sort of cross-selling of activities. So you could have a when night falls tour, cross-sold with a when dawn breaks tour. Yes. I mean, that's great. Um, yeah. And are you still you know, focused around the, the sort of the, the nightlife? Or do you, do you sort of do anything sort of more, more corporate? I mean, in terms of, sort of like the, I mean, one of my, my, my arguments about, about localists is that, you know, there's a reason why it, millions of people go to the VNA. It's because it's a great museum, and the same for the Tate. They're just because they're established, yeah. bucket lit, corporate, sponsored yeah. venues, it doesn't mean that they're not cool. Oh, so, I mean, yeah, is, that, is that something that you're, you're looking at as well? To... Yeah, definitely. I mean, on Airbnb, there are loads of experiences that use, for example, the VNA and certain kind of tourist kind of attractions. Uh, but for me, I really wanted it to be more of an alternative experience. As you're saying, people can go and find those things on their own. You know, they don't require, let's say, a local to go yeah. all the time with them. But if you want to go to a dance party in Epping, there's only That's one. It. There's only one place That's you can it. go. That's it. Or if you're looking for an underground party, yeah. exactly. You're not going to get that hit on a kind of commercial um, website, for example. Right. All right. Well, great. Thanks very much for making the time. Were you out last night? Um, no, but I will be this weekend. Okay. Well, <laughs> so I'm enjoy. Ready for that. Be safe. All right. Well. Um, okay, thanks very much everybody. Uh, we're signing off now. Thanks very much for making the time to join us today. Thanks very much to our sponsors, OTA Insight and CodeGen. Without them this wouldn't have been possible. We've um, thoroughly enjoyed doing these interviews. We're doing TTE Live at ITB. Um, there's probably details somewhere on T News if you want to take part of that. And, um, and um, I've just been told that we've got another interview lined up so i'll do that thanks to our sponsors thing again in a couple of minutes the joy of live the joy of live t news live at tte we'll be back soon thanks very much bye